Hey you guys, Alan Paletti and Joe Southwell. And uh, well, we're doing, the, I think this is the first time since the pandemic started, since uh, we've been able to do like this kind of stream together. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to let you guys know, we've taken all the precautions and uh, both Joe and I have been vaccinated uh, and we're still trying to be as smart as possible about keeping each other safe. So uh, with that being said, we're going to have a really cool uh, live stream tonight. It's going to be amazing. We're going to talk about uh, letters and and fancying them up and all kinds of stuff. I don't want to do... No, no, no. That's fine. I don't want to not do with the service that it deserves because it's a really cool thing. Well, and this is kind of in a weird way an experiment we've been conducting. Uh, maybe it's not an experiment. Research, I would mm. say, that we've been kind of doing against the U.S. Postal Service. Yes. And um, they're... they're there, we did an audit. We did an audit, <laughs> kind of an independent audit of the U.S. Postal Service. And um, the reason um, I wanted to have me on here today is because, well, we've been friends for ever. A long time. Um, and something I'm very fond of is actually writing, handwriting thank you notes. Um, in this digital age, right, we're streaming on YouTube right now. We've got more tech on this desktop than we went to the moon with and it's it's true and all, those, all <laughs> these do. kinds of things right I can launch we, a rocket we, ship we live in a world where there isn't tangibility anymore it's all pixels on plastic yep. and it's there and then it's gone you know and it's it's a link of a text message and then it's gone with the next one that comes after it right um and so as magicians i think we recognize the importance of tangibility right it's one of those things in magic where the more you can have the magic happen in someone else's hands. We all know the more impact that has. Oh, yeah, yeah right? absolutely. So, I mean, I can vanish a coin out of my hand, but if I can vanish a coin out of somebody else's hand, it's, even huge. if it's the exact same mechanism, the difference in impact is striking. And so that's part of the reason um, that I actually write thank you letters and condolence letters and any different, all sorts of different letters. On paper? On, on, right, on real paper? On real paper, and I really mail them, and I really get them to the real person. What? Wow. Um, that's, that's... And it happens so rarely these days, right? Because people don't get letters in the mail, right? They get bills in the mail. They get advertising in the mail. They get um, political campaigning in the mail, they right? Get coupons they get coupons in the mail. Bell but, packs. But they don't very often actually get a letter. And so when a letter does arrive, it's... A thing. It's, it's, an, it's an event. It's for me. It's for me. Like it's. It's, it's like, there. It's, like I only get one for my mom on my birthday. Right. Yeah. You know, um, special thing. And to actually open it up and do that. And so there's there's kind of some do's and don'ts. There's, I think everyone kind of knows how to write a letter, but there's a lot of subtlety that you can do to really step it up. Mm. And um, we're, I'm going to go through a lot of that uh, and kind of show you sort of the results of our little audit. And so basically, what, what I did is I mailed Alan six letters, right? We've got the black tape because the internet For has reasons, yeah. Not so great people on it sometimes. Um, but different combinations. So there's a reason this one actually has two stamps, right? Uh, and this is one. We got wax seals. Um, I try to do a good variety that I use, that I have used, um, that I think uh, would be good for magicians, kind of in that mystery and kind of classical style to see and look at yeah. candle and whatnot. Yeah, and I want so, to dig more into why we sure why we do letters and why I think they're such a great right. idea for um, magicians, especially if you're a, working magician. Right. So after any gig, right, you should you should send something. Mm -hmm. Right, as a professional. Note. I would even add to that, even it, like after any meeting you have, or um, like, mm -hmm. there, like there's a there's a um, organization called Bright Spot, the meeting and incentives company. Right, they put together whatever. Um, I haven't worked with them yet. Right, but uh, every year I, I, I send them a Christmas card, mm -hmm. a, a physical Christmas card. Mm -hmm. um, the, the I did like a lunch and learn with them, so right. I kind of came and talked and gave them you know uh, some ideas for how they can improve their business and their clients experience mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff and uh after that letter right. actual physical letter which everybody was blown away by right a simple because nobody of, does it nobody does it it's anymore cheap. It's, it's cheap oh yeah thing. it's paper and a stamp go, go do I mean, it like, yeah it's just it shows that that little extra attention that you care right you know 
and it leaves them with something tangible. They can put it on their desk. They can't put an email on their desk. Right. You can't. You can't frame a text. No. Right. You can't. Um, it's not going to sit there. I mean, you could, but it looks stupid. Well, and then you lose the phone. <laughs> then... You got to charge it. Yeah, and no, and no one's going to print it out. Right. I, to... I don't know anybody that would take the. Exactly. Right. Nobody would. And there's no right? individuality in that either because it's just it's the same Calibre right. uh, font or whatever. Right. Whatever they have in their phone or, yeah. or whatever, and and people try to make it a little more personal, and they'll they'll do like a an emoji or a, a, an image, you know, those kinds of things, which mm. are a little bit better and a little more fun. But again, nothing has the gone. same impact. They're just gone. Yeah. Right. Um, and do they take a little bit longer to write? Yes. So what? It's worth it. Right. It's worth it. Yeah. Um, and look for reasons to send letters, right? Um, this is maybe stepping away from um, from the business side stuff, but just kind of like for your soul, for your for your mind, finding reasons for gratitude and sharing that gratitude with people yeah. is a it makes their day, right? Because these people aren't necessarily expecting something like no. that. But it also, you know, it's so easy for us just to find reasons to be upset about things, and to get upset. And it seems like animosity. people only put pen to paper when they're pissed off. Right. And you know? angry <laughs> reviews and those kinds of things. But, but to write something and let someone know why you appreciate it, right? Um, I have a very heartfelt letter that you sent me. Yeah. yeah. Um, was, you know, I've had friends. Very, yeah. I've had friends. Um, I got the impression that uh, they they had decided not to auto delete uh, hmm. because I had sent them a letter. Right. Because they had said they posted something online, and I was like, "That's sounding kind of dark. Let me actually physically write, not another post saying it'll be alright." I was like, "No, here is why I think you're an awesome person." And I sent it to him, and he called me up, and like a long, long time later, he still carried that letter like in his backpack. He, he carries it with him it now. It makes an impact. It makes an impact in ways you in ways you wouldn't believe. So find the reason. It's good for you. It's good for them. On a personal level, on a business level, you're trying to differentiate yourself from everybody else, right? And yeah, everybody else is busy. Text and or maybe email whatnot, or something, right? right? And people, when they get something special and physical like that, they're not keen to throw it away. No, they're not. And guess right? what? It's, it's got your address. It's your got your address. It's got your contact information. <laughs> it sits on their desk, right? It stays in front of them, right? Mm -hmm. More so than almost any other thing could, right? Um, and it's not just oh, I got you this nice. Here's a bottle of wine, right? right? Which is which is a pretty common gift, sure, right? Not but a bad drink, one. I like it. But then they drink but the bottle and then they throw away the bottle. They throw away the bottle, uh, right? Uh, 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 and this is way cheaper than a bottle of wine, and it stays on their desk. Right, and you don't. They don't have to drink. Right, they don't have to, you don't have to know if they drink or not. <laughs> right, I yeah, I become uh, quite a bit of a teetotaler as I get older, and I know right. a lot of people who are just like you know what, I'm either they're recovering well, like, or they don't. Yeah, because some people are in recovery. You do not right? want to send somebody in recovery send bottle <laughs> wide if they're in recovery. <laughs> that right? will not make the right impression. But no, nobody is like recovering from letter reading. Right, right? so that that's not a thing. I, no, I give up. I give up, <laughs> I give up reading for Lent. Yeah, which is <laughs> made, made directions interesting on the road, right? It got exciting. Stop. What is it? <laughs> so, fortunately, they had the shape. You could recognize you just the, shape, the right? shape of the color. Okay. Um, but I wanted to uh, kind of go through some of the subtleties uh, yeah. and different things on how to handle it. a lot it. of different types here. And, I, and I've come a long way, too. And also, hey, let's. this is why I think it's great. But let's also let's be honest about the downsides and how to kind of deal with and potentially work around them. Okay. And so I'll think, we'll just start with the bad, right? Yeah, so, switch over the other camera here. Uh, we can. Be handy. Okay. So uh, did this. That, did that work? Did it work? Nope. Nope. Oh my. Did it go to sleep? No, it didn't. You putz. All right, let's Gosh, do Gosh, if only we had decent tech. Ah, okay. there we go. Oh, okay. there we go. Oh, so, so this, and the reason, the reason I wanted to bring this is the post office, if you go online and research, they'll talk about how reliable they are. Here's why I think that's not a fair number to look at. Mm. Because they are counting, as far as I can tell, they're counting every piece of mail. Not 
first class letters, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So all the junk mail, all the bills, all the all that kind of stuff that goes through the mail normally, not the stuff that actually gets a stamp put on it, right? Is in their 99.9 .9 whatever percent delivery rate, right? Physically mailing things, there is a weird time lag and sometimes they don't arrive. And so I'm gonna try and make that aware first. We'll go through all this and then we'll talk about ways to work around that in different situations. Okay. But the reason I wanted to point this out, right, is this is one I sent to a friend after a Christmas party, right? He hosted and I want to say thank you, right? So I sent him a thank you letter. So there, uh, this was a 23rd. Okay, so there's the post date. Oh, you're gonna get some letters. Right, uh -huh. December 23rd. This went around in the postal service and got back to me March, March 19th. <laughs> good, old, good old U.S. post office. Right? So, December, January, Feb, this floated in the U.S. Postal Service system around for that many months. Right? More than two months. That's ridiculous. Right? That's, that's kind of crazy. And so, that does and can happen. It was weird because we, there was actually a party at two. Like it started at one person's house, then it kind of moved to the other person's house. Oh, that was a good party, <laughs> and then, right? And like the first person got their letter, but then he didn't. And he was like, "What the heck, man? Why didn't I get my letter?" <laughs> I was like, "I thought you did." <laughs> I, said it, I swear, I did. Right? Unless you pay extra, and you can't pay extra to find out that it's actually received. But then people weirdly, understandably, kind of get a little freaked out when it's certified return because often that's like. IRS or something like that, where it's like we need to know that you actually receive this, and people get scared and, and we're hesitant. We've been about trying that. to reach you about your extended warranty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you haven't. <laughs> you have, but I have no extended warranty. Okay, so there's that. And actually, let's let's cover. Okay, so this is what most people think of in terms of styling a letter, right? Yep, that's the, what I think of. The two, the receiver here, their address, and then. The, the from address up here in the corner, stamp right there. Okay, this is the common way, this is the way everyone is taught. This is not the only way to do it, and this is ugly as hell, right? You can do it another way. With, I wrote this to the Magic Minute audience, right? That's address to you guys. Here. That's to you guys, right? Stamp here. You can put your return address on the back flap, right? Now, if you're gonna do it this way, the U.S. Postal Service considers whichever side the stamp is on to be the front. And so you can have one address centered here, another address centered here, but as long as the stamp is on this side, this then becomes the to address and this is the from address. And that's how they make that distinction. That's cool. Right? Yeah. So you can make it nice and clean up. So, so it's, it's so, this is so much prettier. It's very clean. Right? As a recipient. Yeah. Right? And I've got, I mean, back there right boom and what i plan on doing that i haven't done yet is just getting some like stickers that are my return address that i can just sit on there i think i have a stamp that has my return address mm -hmm. but i'll start using the dark uh stationery mm -hmm. and since the stamp is in black i'm gonna show so i'll probably make some stickers no. <laughs> right? well no but it, but it, but it's uv ink it's <laughs> right yeah don't don't trust him on that no don't don't listen to me Right. So profession in terms of stamps, right? You got all sorts of options. General Christmas is fine. Everyone knows there's a lot of variety of stamps. Uh, there is a magic series of stamps. Yes, the US I'm aware. Postal Service came yes. out with a while ago. I think for four different stamps. It was like a cards, a dove, um, someone doing a little bit, like ring over a lady through a, mm -hmm. a table. Mm -hmm. uh, so many a top. I can't remember what the fourth one was. They, they often yeah. do kind of sets of four. Yeah, I, I, I think it's linking rings, rub it up, and top mm. that. There was a card something. Yeah, that, but I, I I have a set somewhere. Still right, in cellophane. And so right, to me. you can do themed, um, either for you or for them. Uh, to do that, at this point, I pretty much just do. Um, I like this. I like this. This set. Uh, this is the. 25th anniversary celebration of the lunar landing set i like it because it's black and silver so it goes well with the station yeah right yeah it looks um, if you're not sure the patriotic ones in the u.s it's u.s postal service they're business neutral and they're fine um america america right 
these I send these out. I, I will send these to people I know when it's not Christmas. <laughs> you paid kind of, for them. It looks, well, I paid for them, and if it, I, I, would, I wouldn't do that in a professional setting. Yeah, right? like is that a season? Be that far out of season, yeah. right? Like that's not really appropriate. I wonder if it's, out of season. Yeah, but in if, season, uh, does you, are they always um, because of the, there's a couple of holidays that are celebrated around that time do you mm-hmm. make a distinction about when you're mailing letters professionally if you make like a okay a so overtly christmas well okay, but, but even or... if you, okay so this one actually says a one horse open sleigh right so that's that's uh, pretty that's neutral. not like it's, it's, just it's seasonal it's a seasonal song right it's the christmas seasonal song right, right. it's not kwanzaa it's not hanukkah right. it's not even specifically christmas it's no. seasonal seasonal Right, and so I wouldn't that worry cool. about that kind of stuff. Okay. Personally, I'm kind of of the opinion that um, everyone tries to be very sensitive and whatnot. I find it much more interesting to, uh, just in general, to be wish, genuinely you. Be genuinely you. Yeah. Right. So um, if you are big into say Christian ministry, right? Well, then send a Christmas one. Right. That is, it is a distinctively Christmas sure. one. Yeah. Right. Um, well, I know a little bit more about you, right? Um, if the if they're into some sort of hobby that you happen to know of, you can do that, right? At a certain point, you don't necessarily want to just pile up a great big collection of stamps unless you're into it, right? right? Well, then you're probably not. If you're into it, you're probably not slapping. You're on not letters. slapping on there, right? Um, and you can get uh, interesting places to look for stamps. Uh, if you're going for the generic, like patriotic ones, eBay seems to have the best rates. Okay, and so you can actually end up paying less than. You would at the postal service by getting the stamps on eBay. No kidding. No kidding. Wow. So you can yes. save some money on, on stamps uh, by getting them on eBay. Uh, Amazon seems pretty good at sort of the um, non-generic ones. So like the the themed ones, right? Where, the, where they're doing a collection. Right? Mm. Those, that seems to be the best places. Uh, best place I've found to get some of the more stylistic ones. Because it's also easier to find those sets on eBay. Than, or, I'm sorry, oh. on Amazon than on eBay. Um, bulk letters, you can do that. Um, you can print your own postage. Here's why I don't recommend that, right? For like start, bulk mail doesn't. Well, people are so used to getting so much junk mail, right? You kind of want to do everything you can to make your letter not look like bulk mail, mm-hmm. right? Which is why I could print off the address, but I but don't. I write it on there, right? And I write it on there sloppy so they can tell it's handwritten not right it's not a font that looks like a hand right it's not handwritten. a font that looks like a handwritten yeah I've got and, a, and when we open these up you can you'll actually get a chance to see some of my calligraphy you don't have to be in a calligraphy you do need to write legibly i have a president's <laughs> award for academic achievement mm-hmm. that's signed by bill clinton right that's, that's how old i am <laughs> right and uh it, it, it's not signed by bill clinton. no <laughs> it's no. a stamp that's of his signature and you can tell right, right. and so <laughs> you can get like stamped envelopes again that looks more bulk mail it does right it looks like uh, i'm just wanting you, you don't and, want them to feel like a number right, right. They're, you they're well not. you don't want them to feel like a number but also people throw away junk mail yeah they do right I, I and throw so away a lot be, 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 without ever opening it oh yeah never. and so <laughs> like does it have something hard on it no, no okay junk right, right. and it's so not like my replacement debit card okay, and so no. you don't want it to look like bulk mail right you want to do everything you can to make it not look like yeah. Right, which is why I don't do the pre-printed envelopes. Right, which is why I don't. Um, yeah, which is why mail merge. Right, I'm not right because right, they they have envelopes that have already paid for the postage. You can get custom printed ones. They always end up having a barcode on there that I think looks horrible. Anything barcodey looks more and more bulk maily, and it's more likely to get trashed. Right? Uh, so that's another another issue. That's why I don't do that. That's why I always do a physical stamp on the. Um, Right, on the on the letter, or right, on the envelope, or the letter, right? And we'll get into some of the subtle things you could do here. Yeah, I, so, well, I'm, I'm, so I've had these I've had these letters, guys, too, for a couple of weeks. Some of them, yeah. some of them like a month. Well, yeah. So we we, and, I, we kept the record. We can go through like when they how long they took, and some of them because this was this was a personal audit for me because it was a fun experiment to do to see. Well, how often are they getting there? How long are they taking? Because the U.S. Postal Service says, oh, it'll take three to five days. And I'm like, that's not my experience, because uh, I know it can take two months. two months before it gets back to me and they say no. Um, so I wanted to do a little bit of, a, of an audit. We can go through 
which ones did and didn't and how they arrived and whatnot. Okay. Uh, but let's start off do you by... Want to put it back down here? Yeah, let's put it back down here. You want to open the letters here? Oh, man. Do I, I, get, the, I get the honor of it's it? It's like unboxing, only it's unenveloping. Un un yeah. So, I, so, guys, I've been holding on to these for a while. So, we'll start with this okay. first one. We'll start with this first one. This is to the Magic Minute audience. This is to you guys. This is to you guys. Yeah. I don't know what is. I don't. I don't know what's in there. He actually doesn't. <laughs> I, I like he. He never told me, and they're still sealed. I had to exercise so much uh, self control. Just, I was <laughs> like, I want. I was like, I want to open. Like, because you want to open them, mm -hmm. right? And that's part. I mean, that's part of the right. Your your reason, rationale there for the whole thing. So uh, we're gonna find out what it says, okay? And you guys get the, the people have been that are here hanging out and everything. This is this is the reward for. Uh, for hanging out with us. I'm really excited. I don't know what it says. All right. Ah, okay. I feel like I should be wearing white gloves. You know? <laughs> Just became an unboxing video. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. This, thank you. Thank you. Look at, look at that. Look. Okay, d uh, before we even read what, like, <laughs> look at that. What an impression that makes, right? Like, imagine you're, you're, you're a magician. You are, you know, you just had a meeting with somebody or you want to earn some business or something. You get this letter in the mail. Thank you. Like, look at, look at that. It's beautiful. This is paper. Look at that. It's a nice, it's a nice textured stock. paper. It's the stock, right? <laughs> it pulls a crease. 65. <laughs> Can you tear it? Oh, I'm not going to. <laughs> Look, it's even got a watermark. It's it's bone. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just joking. Right, memes. we're all, all all the memes. All the memes. The look. Let's see what it says. This was this was the first set I assembled. The paper is Southworth parchment. Oh, this is this Southworth paper? That's well, I like that. Stuff. Yeah. Well, Southworth parchment is that 65 pound? Mm -hmm. Cut in half with the corners round. Cut. Snatcher? Am I smaller. Right? Small, smaller. Okay, because I'm reading that. Uh, on the inside. Okay, yeah. so. We, so uh, just, why don't you read it to me? Because okay. I'm, I'm trying to read it off the screen. Well, first of all, I just want to point out that uh, you opened a letter addressed to somebody else. So everybody here online just witnessed you commit a federal crime. Um, <laughs> not that I'm the kind of friend that would entrap you into committing a federal crime and encourage that sort of thing and set it up perfectly, but I just, I just want everyone to realize this is. We're dealing with a federal criminal here. Oh, well. He made me do it. He did not. He just he just <laughs> laid it out there. <laughs> so this was the first set I assembled. The paper is Southworth parchment, 65 pounds, cut in half with the corners rounded and smaller rounding on the inside. The envelopes are four and three eighths by five and three quarters, uh, all of which are available at Office Supply. Great. Um, so you don't have to go anywhere special or make, anything. Yeah. Make your own set. The cost is lower and the quality is higher and the style yours. So this is something I kind of ran into and I started uh, wanting to get more into this and, and whatnot. There are like specialty invitation stores, right? For like wedding invitations. Yeah, oh yeah. Those sorts Papyrus of is one of the big ones. Right. There's all sorts of things. Yeah. Stay away. The paper is expensive. The envelopes are expensive and the quality's junk. Right. I have some um, uh, some Hallmark uh, like thank you letters, and right. I was surprised at how crappy they were. Right, <laughs> like it's like and, this and, is supposed to be Hallmark, right? You know? and, like thirty dollars for like fifteen envelopes, or and, and it's outrageous. Like, right, what? it's absolutely outrageous. Um, you can get, and that and that's why I gave this specific list of how I this or I got all this at the same day. We get that actually on the thing. I want if you guys want to like. Uh, this point in the video, if you want to pause it to kind of get the dimensions and that kind of stuff, you'll be able to uh, recreate this for yourselves. Okay. Oof. And then so now you guys got it. Okay. And so, uh, Moon Eater says, this is like a time machine that actually works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no Mr. So, Fusion needed. Right. 65 pounds is about the right it's weight. Gotta, it's got a... The stock. Well, it's nice. It's not. It's not flimsy paper, but it's also not. Doesn't feel like card stock. Right. It's like so somewhere between. Right. Um, much thicker than that, and it's going to be hard to fold. It doesn't it won't want to fold in half? Oh, and do you, those weird crunchy bit yeah, things like on the, the edge. bubbly yeah. middle and whatnot. You don't want that much yeah. thinner than that. It doesn't really feel substantial. Right. Right. So sixty-five pounds seems to be about the right. It's a sort of happy place. It's nice and quality. Um, you feel it. 
you can get like ones that say thank you ahead of time and then you can only use them for thank you like if somebody has a loss in the family you want to send them a condolence letter you probably shouldn't write it on a thank you letter letter right um thank you for your loss thank you for your loss right like just just put what you want in the title right you can put their name on the title oh, you can man. um you could do that right now <laughs> i've this is my calligraphy oh let's let's do this can we pop that okay, I wanna, so yeah i want to point see out this you don't have let me point out the difference is there anything private on here no this is fine okay so okay. this is my calligraphy this is not my handwriting this is this is this is this is my calligraphy. This is drawing. This is a this is a skill. This is an <laughs> art that I have practiced and continue to practice and improve and work on. That's my handwriting. Okay, my handwriting is barely legible by me. Okay, so don't think, oh, you have great handwriting. No, I have decent calligraphy. I have words I can't say because Alan is a friend and we're trying to keep this. Kindly rated. I'm five minutes. Handwriting. I'm five. I'm five watch hours from being monetized. Okay. Right, so, I actually want the want a fighting chance here. Right. Um, now, if I'm actually sending somebody a letter, I I'll do the calligraphy generally first. If it's more of a business scenario and I'm trying to really make an impression, I'll practice that. If it's a more casual letter, like we'll see in some of the others, I'll just try to take my time and write more legibly. Right. It needs to be legible. It doesn't need to be immaculate. It doesn't need to be calligraphy, but it does need to be handwritten and it does need to be legible. Right. That's that's where it is. And, legibility is important. Right. Legibility matters. Take, take your time. Right. Yeah. Make it work. Uh, I also have a question here sure, from, sure. from Moon Eater um, says uh, or, or, or a comment really um, says you could write thank you with normal ink and use invisible ink for the message question mark. Um. I guess you could, although I don't know what you what you would expect to happen with the uh, with the invisible ink side of it. Um, well, maybe if, yeah, maybe if you had like instruct like if you're trying to do something mystical or magical or something. Okay, yeah, so we, we can we can talk about some of the weird inks that you can use. And he knows different a lot about like inks. So um, you can eh, we'll get we'll get into this now. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and talk about this. So this is a, a weird tool. I haven't heard anybody else use it this way, and I've checked on like all the calligraphy and stationery and whatnot. So you would, when you're using generic paper, right? You want your lines to be straight. Yes. Right. You yes. Nice, even lines. Yeah. Okay. You don't want to send it on line paper. You don't want to send it on line paper. Like... It doesn't look very good. No. You want your lines to be straight, and so mm -hmm. what? Anybody who, like, even professional calligraphers, right? When it matters, they'll draw the guidelines, and erase them. Mm -hmm. Right, I've had too much issue with different inks or different things smearing when I try to erase it, right? right. And so I wanted to uh, find another solution. I have this is the solution that I found that works great, but I haven't heard anybody else do this. So you magicians are pr probably familiar with this. They is the probably already own it. Friction. That's the good news, right? And so the way this works, let me do a little sample here, right, as an example. So you'll you can draw a line. Right, and then this works with friction and heat. It goes away. Right, it's not actually rubbing away. It's the friction creates the heat, and the heat makes it go clear. So there's still a chemical here, right? But you pop that in the freezer; it'll show back up. Right. Yeah. Um, but with heat, it'll go away. So what I do now, keep from rubbing everything, is I'll, if it really matters, I want it to be nice and straight. Is I'll lay out a ruler, draw my guidelines, right. And then with a candle or some heat source, mm -hmm. I'll just hold the letter over the candle until those go away. And then it's not smearing. It's not rubbing away. <coughs> I don't have to try and do anything. Right? It's perfectly clean. It's perfectly clean. The only real concern I would have with mailing it out like that is if I'm mailing it to someplace pretty cold in the winter where it might sit in a mailbox and the ink might reappear. Because if anybody's familiar with, with this as a, as a tool, Sometimes for magic, um, it disappears with heat, it reappears with cold, right? Mm -hmm. It has to get pretty cold to come back really strong, but you can start to see it again just by taking, if I were to take this and put it in the freezer, in an hour or two, mm -hmm. you, you can start to see the lines again. Right, right. But who's going to do that? <laughs> well, no one's going to do it deliberately, right? No. But, but if you send it to a house and it's below freezing outside and it sits in their mailbox, Mm. Then it could. That's right? interesting. And so okay. that's what I was saying, right? Okay. 
as as a con- as a consideration in that scenario, right? Depends on where you're sending it, I guess. Depends on where you're sending it and when you're sending it. And into right? the Alaskan wilderness. Right, in winter, then... Dick Prenicky and... Maybe that. maybe take that... If it matters to you, then take that into consideration. But let's go through some of the... Oh, and, and the other thing. So this is half of a standard 8.5 by 11 sheet, right? So Yeah, it's 5... Uh, you said it was 4, four and 3 eighths by Well, that's five the size of the envelope, okay. wherever that went, wherever you have oh, it. Oh, I have it here. Right, okay, so it. this is... A standard size envelope that they had there, right? I chose ivory, um, just because it like the color match, right? You can go with stark white. I think that going with an off white, a little classier, makes it a little more. Makes it, I think it looks better, right? It adds more substance to it to, um, to not just have a harsh white. Um, if you're going to be writing on both sides of a card like this you need to be sure that the lines on this side of the page and this side of the page do not line up oh interesting because the eye will because oh, the rebuilding. eye will want to naturally yeah. read across yeah that's right a, that's actually a, i would not have thought about and that. and so you can do that in different ways you can here i've staggered the lines right you can have that's brilliant you can change the height like the distance between each line um, so, but what, but you don't want this line to match up with that line. And I've tried very hard to make sure they didn't. That's brilliant. Right? Yeah, and it's not some, it's not something you realize will make a difference until you actually do it. And then you're like, well, okay. I, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it'll always be fine for you because you know what you meant, but the other person gets it and it can be hard to read and that's not, yeah. that's not good. Yeah. Right? Um, and then just another little touch I did, these corners are rounded. So you can get like scrapbooking and different things that'll cut the corners. If you're gonna do it this way. You want the if you want to use you can use the same radius on all of them. If you'll notice, this has a different radius than this one. Mm-hmm. You'll want the inside tighter than the outside if you're gonna do two different. Otherwise, like it looks. I guess it looks. It looks, weird. looks kind of inside out, and like this is kind of what a book would naturally look like. So it, it intuitively opens in the right direction. Interesting. So right, that's that's good design, right? It's, yeah. It's, it's uh, implicit in the. And you don't uh, you don't have to do it this way, right? Maybe you want to do it this way. You want to write your letter like this. So it'll sit up. Yeah, the little that table way, tent ones, right? Or whatever. Yeah. Uh, you could Which write the ones that I have. Right. You could also yep. Yep. write the message this way. So then they might set it on their desk like that, right? Instead of like that. So keep in mind, they're gonna, you're going to want it. You're sending it to them. It's tangible. You're hoping that they will put it in some place that's prominent and special to them and they can enjoy it and think often, right? If you start doing this, like, I have gotten thank you notes for my thank you letter. Yeah. Right? Because people don't get them, right? No, they don't. And it's, and it's so simple to do. You want to so, make an impression. That's right. That's how you do it. And part of why I wanted to do this, this experiment is I wanted to see... Uh, how well i want to see how long it took some of these to get through the mail mm-hmm. how I long did it take that one that one this one let's see which one alan out of corner fold this the uh white set to audience outside usps um that was march 9th to march 12th so not long right that's march 9th to 12th okay that's three days right that's what it's supposed to take that one took three days Okay, so it took about as long as it needed to. Right. They say three to five. That one took three. That's what it's supposed to be. Right. Uh, so let's do another one. This is where we're starting to get kind of interesting. So this is, these two are different styles I was trying. So let's... Oh, oh I get to open these. Well, two. I'd, I'd like you to, because I haven't actually seen anybody unfamiliar with these open them. And so this is kind of a... Oh, experience. so you're going to see if I can... Like how you do it and how you react. It's a litmus test, okay. Yeah, it's a litmus test, because uh, I know what I was intending, but... <laughs> you, find, you find a... You're in the desert, and you find a tortoise on its back. <laughs> <laughs> you flipped it over. Why'd you do that? <laughs> uh, I don't know. That's a Blade Runner reference, by the way, for anybody too young to know what, I'm, what we're talking about. Okay, and it says... I, um, it says, I'm used to typing that, that my handwriting is awful. It had taken me much longer than I would like to write a birthday card for my queen. Aw. Yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those things. Yeah, it, well, you know what? Nothing will improve your, your, your handwriting. You it. Like uh, wanting to send letters, right? Right. Yeah. And practice. I mean, it, it's a skill. Yeah. Writing the letters is the skill. Um, wording the letters is a skill. We talked about that some yeah. in a bit. Um, but 
Okay, yeah. so this is to this was this, these next two were very experimental. Okay, I'm curious to see how these go. Yeah, because you see this, this has got kind of like an origami fold to it. If you guys want to see that, it's got these cool like uh, folded in corners, and it's folded in itself. This is this is the letter and the envelope. Yes, there is actually no envelope on this. There's no envelope. This is the whole thing, which is really cool. So I would I would intuitively want to open it from this side. I think I'd want to put my thumbs in here and open it like that. Is that? Oh, and, there, and look at the wax. There's 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 wax seals there that kind of kept these flaps closed too. That's interesting. Okay, and then there may not be anything on it. Okay, yeah. Just and me. look at that. He. <laughs> this is <laughs> the blank letter. <laughs> this is the letter says everything that men know about women. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> you had to write really small. Okay, so this. Part of, I did this for a couple of reasons. What I wanted to just kind of see how it would go through the mail. Uh, when I talked to the person at the post office, because the way it was folded, it was sort of open on the sides. Mm. And so it was their recommendation that I do something to uh, seal that. Mm. So it wouldn't uh, catch other letters or cause a problem. Right, right? you wouldn't want to like one to accidentally jam in the other right, one. Right, or it begins with someone else's, or you end up with somebody else's letter, or they end up with yours. Right, because it, 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 it is, whenever it's folded, it is folded very securely. Like, I wouldn't think that you would need the wax to keep it closed necessarily right but if you but, think about how many letters are all there next to each other and it's got an open side shove right in there could, and, right yeah okay so like it or love it right uh or hate it it arrives really cool right yeah this is still kind of the letter here's the downside to it that's gonna be hard to set anywhere yeah how right? do you so display that message Right. I mean, you could. I guess you could flatten it out, but it like you, you kind want of flatten it out, frame right? So you could. It's um. It's actually kind of a very. It's a nod to a very classic style of letter writing. So back when everybody was conversing with letters, because we didn't have Email, telegraph or anything like that, or... right? People would fold the letters into the envelope. Yeah, well, right. It's you, you didn't need an envelope. Pa paper was expensive back then. Paper was expensive, right? Um, and they didn't. You wouldn't pay extra for the envelope, and you would just send it as the letter. Yeah. Right. And then people would take it, and they either like put it in their stack of letters, or they burn it. And it was, it's interesting reading some of the like Victorian etiquette things where they don't agree hmm. on whether it's appropriate to burn a letter afterwards or retain it. Hmm. And so that's an interesting, that uh, interesting. disagreement. I want to ask too: Is this yeah. the same? This is the same stock. This is the exact same stock. Is that what it comes? Is that that's eight and a half by eleven? This is eight and a half by eleven. So that's just a standard sheet of paper. It's a standard sheet of paper. There's nothing. Right. right. It's just folded in an interesting way. So. You can go if you want to see. Yeah, can, can we show? That. Can yeah, we show how that folds? The other reason. So, and there's something too. But before we do that, yeah. I want to um, read a comment. Um, Moon Eater says, or or Burn, feel the burn, uh, says, "Oh, that looks like the envelopes that they sell here in Japan, where you put money inside and give it at weddings or as as a wedding gift." Mm. That's that's interesting. So it's yeah, that, that's another um, thing you can do if you want to like kind of look for different folds. Um, you can, because I was kind of interested in that tradition of folding the letter as its own envelope, mm -hmm. right? And so I was looking up some of the origami um, styles of folding to make an envelope, mm -hmm. right? because that, that's sort of the package style you want to send it. Um, we, we'll get into the, like the, when you start getting into oddities and when you start have to pay more for postage in different right, situations, cover, but... right? But if you want to go over this fold real quick. Yeah, let's pop down here. Said, and, uh... They said this one was cool and it didn't require additional postage. So and you can do that if you guys want to, if you have a sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper, right. that's all we're using here. So you can follow along if you want. Right. Uh, so that's there. Sort of this corner to the middle, other corner to the middle. Then I'm trying to open. Then this edge, even with that edge, it's symmetrical. So it goes both ways. There. Goes up. That goes up. And these two each. Tuck in that piece you made. Pretty and nice, neat little package. There you um, go. Right? And clearly it went through, right? Single stamp. It's going to make it a little safer and kind of add that, you know, security or whatever. You can add wax or tape or something on the side. Um, it's cool that it opens in the middle. And it's, an, it's a weird thing. And nobody is going to confuse this with bulk mail. No. Right? You get, if you got this in the mail, you'd know this is unusual and special, and this is you'd be curious, right, and excited to open it. Yeah. So, definitely more cool factor in the experience of opening. That's the plus side. Uh, I guess another plus might be you don't have to pay for an envelope, 
right? That's a plus. That's a plus. Uh, downside, it's not as easy to keep afterward, right? It's not as easy to display on a desk or something like that, right? Um, also, the um, you're going to start getting into like the folding of the different things, uh, the different envelope folds. Mm -hmm. You then have to start being careful on the cardstock that you use because the thicker cardstock doesn't like to have a lot of layers folded into it. And okay. it starts getting really hard to do that. Gotcha. So it's folded well, then mailed okay, right? But the thinner paper that folds well maybe isn't going to ship as well. And, and there's, there's a weird kind of balance you have to sort of reach, right? Right. And that this was a fold I found that worked well with this hard stock thickness that I already had. And so that's why I did that. Yeah, that's cool. There's that one. Do the other light one. And so this one, um, right? Pretty classic size. I'm not used to doing this. Pretty classic size. Um, and again, address there, stamp in that corner. And I put my address right across this line in the back. But this one's kind of cool because you'll see up close how it's not, it looks like a standard envelope, but it's not. You want to open your next letter? Yeah, this looks like, if I saw this pulling out of the mail at first, I'd be like, oh, that's uh, that's standard envelope. I'd get, yeah, it's a birthday card or yeah. whatever, right? But then, ooh, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. You see the edge there. It's, you notice it's very different. These are wax sealed too, and I wanted to ask you about that too because, um, well, we'll, we'll get some serious wax. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here in a yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll go into that, and if that's a plus or a minus. Okay. And this one, I wouldn't be sure. Oh, there's. Luckily, I've got there. So a little tape that they put around <laughs> the edges here, oh, so yeah. I don't want to tear the paper. So that's an interesting. That's something to keep in mind, though. So Desert people are battery. wanting to open these easily. Towards your wrist, thumb, <laughs> not your thumb, is right. that the... and into the wrist. Of the hand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I would, I would imagine that I'd want to break these seals first, and then I would flip it open. So okay. that, and look at that. There was so much that Joe knew about women that we had to write a part two. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I've heard this style of folding called a number of different things. Th this. If you're into history and that sort of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. This method of folding a letter, right? Where the, it's simple, right? The sides are brought in, this comes down, you tuck the bottom into those folds, right? So it makes its own little package and you press it down, nice, neat, full to send. That style of, of folding letters was basically the style through like the 1700s and the wow. All right, so that 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 style reigned for hundreds of years in terms of shipping letters. Uh, back back when you actually paid to receive a letter, so the mail used to work backwards, right? You would send a letter, and then each person, each carrier, would add their stamp to it and pay for the previous one. And when it arrived to you, you would have to pay the postman for everywhere that it had been. Oof. Right? Yeah, I, I, I see and why we so, don't have that. Right. <laughs> and so, but, you know, you would want to receive letters. And if you didn't pay for it, well, you don't get the information. And tough crap. Tough crap, right? And so, but that's another way of doing it. It's eh, not as cool looking on the outside, but this is, I would say, easier to sort of keep right for for someone it's, mm -hmm. there's not there's going to be fewer lines like fold lines on it so it'll probably be easier to read as well yeah right yeah. if you want to do the letter as the envelope right another thing also we're magicians yeah right so if you wanted to like mail a prediction or fold something up to have it on stage mm -hmm. and sealed and those kinds of things mm -hmm. you can use this in different ways right it's and if it's look. and if it's pre-wax sealed then nobody's going to accuse you of messing with it ahead no. of time right right and could you just put it in a, in a normal envelope oh yeah but 
this has what is, but it's, this is a lot cooler, right? right? This, is present, this is gonna be a lot presentation. better. It, there is a presentation factor to it, yeah. right? That you can absolutely get. So, let's see, there's. Yeah, a moon says that looks like a super secret envelope. Yeah. I'm gonna switch back over to this camera and then I run out for a second. Okay. And I'll be right back. So, Joe, Joe I guess, is the, I got the, the host show. of the magic. All right. Movie. cats are away the mice are going to play and i did not fully understand his setup so i'm just going to kind of go through the rest of these so i'll talk um a bit about wax seals and why these have the different postage as opposed to these other ones that still use wax right okay so here's a weird thing i learned so if you do a bit of research online you'll in terms of wax seals which look awesome right they're just cool um, you'll pretty quickly hear that you can't actually mail things if they have wax seals on them, right? Um, and clearly that's not true, right? Clearly that's not true. Here's two proofs that that's not true. Um, what they generally recommend for like wedding invitations and those kinds of things is doing the pretty seal and everything and then putting that letter into another letter that's a broader envelope and then shipping all of that um but then it's like you open that one and then you have this another one out and then you gotta break that one and whatnot okay so it's not true um what you do have to do instead is because of the thickness of the seal and just the nature of it these are considered non-machinable Let's see if we can, yeah, you can see right there at the bottom of that stamp. So it's not a standard forever stamp, right? This one says forever. This is a normal stamp, right? This one doesn't say forever. It says non-machinable surcharge, right? So there's an extra, I think it's like 15 cents uh, that you pay if it's non-machinable. Now, if you do that, then you can do the wax seals, right? Without taking this and putting it inside another envelope. Now, you don't necessarily have to use this stamp as long as you pay the right amount, which is why you can do two stamps, two forever stamps, which actually more than covers it, um, but that then covers the appropriate non-machinable postage. And then you can do these kinds of seals, right? So, uh, a quick word about that. Um, if you're doing the seals, be careful about which, se which type of sealing wax you use. So you, you actually don't want to use the really classic style of sealing wax because it's too brittle and it will fall apart and crack and break. So you'll, you'll notice here, this actually has some flex to it, right? It's not shattering the way traditional sealing wax would um, and so this this is what it'll get through the mail okay and so just be aware of and be cautious on that so even though well if he's already committed a federal crime I don't see why I should be left out I'll go ahead and open this letter even though it's written to him so you can sometimes peel it sometimes people try to crack it there's different ways of doing that so all right I like the black and silver and red. I think it's a really classic look. This is showing up really, really red. It's not, it's more of a, in person, it's more of a maroon. It's not this like candy red, more of a maroon red. Um, with regards to the seals, this is the easy answer. You can get all sorts of weird little pieces and different things. If you really want to get that far into it, okay. I think just the fact that you're putting a seal on it already takes it so far beyond what anybody else is doing. This is sealing wax that fits a hot glue gun. And that is so much easier to use and to apply and to put in places rather than like getting the little candle and the spoon with the right number of pellets and then letting that on top of the candle and waiting for that to melt and then pouring the wax and then pressing the seal. Um, or you can stick this in a hot glue gun and let it heat up while you're writing the letter. And then when you seal it, one pump or two, depending on the size of your seal, press, done. 
right? And then it's put away, and then it's ready for the next time, and it just works. And so this is the way to go. Um, the only really tricky part about using these is that you need to be sure that the hot glue gun has a low setting. Um, but as long as it has a low setting, you're fine. If it has a high setting, then you'll start to actually get bubbles in the seal. So just make sure the hot glue gun is set to low. And then this works. And it works great. Um, and then it's easy, and you don't have to deal with it. And if you want to do several letters in a row, you can just dollop, 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 seal, seal, seal. Actually, you should probably dollop, seal, wait. So you can transfer the seal, but um, this is handy and easy and great and wonderful to use and the way to go if you're going to do any kind of wax sealing. If you're going to do the other stuff, I mean, you can get as crazy or as silly as you want. You can get into fountain pens and all sorts of inks and craziness if you like. Um, but the mere fact that it has a seal is already going to put you ahead. Um, and the seal is an opportunity to put uh, your logo. Right, so you can get custom-made seals, like 35 bucks for the seal itself, right? And then that can go on to each one as it goes out. That is going to have a huge impact uh, when it arrives because everyone knows it's that really fun, classic thing. And now they're getting that um, uh, and they're gonna know it's from you. They're gonna remember that. I mean, who gets to open a wax seal these days, right? And you're giving that experience to them. And so I would uh, highly recommend that. So here's another version, same thing. So this is that, um, that classic fold, right? Something you do be careful about, though, and consider, here's the downside of them, right? The seals can hold a little too well and can actually cause it to where if someone's trying to open it, they actually end up tearing, right? So as classic as this is in terms of styling and format, if you're going to use a seal, I would put it on an envelope, right? Put it on an envelope so that they don't feel bad for tearing it um, like this, right? Because I knew about this feature, still trying to work around it, and it still tore, right? And they don't want to do that. They may not know to just peel that off because people aren't used to dealing with these. So. Um, but again, right here on the side, that peels off easily. Here, where it's just like inside the paper, it doesn't really seem to tear that much, and right, opens nice and easy. Ah, and of course, now that I say nice and easy, oh no, there's some under here too. Okay, yeah, there it is. All right, same situation. So this is, uh, I told you what the other one was. I, I can't recall the poundage on this particular paper. I know it's Astro Bright from Amazon, uh, but I also found it uh, found the same thing at um, Staples, right? Same place I got the other set. So you can get a great big thick stack of black paper. If you want to go with black, they have lots of other different colors. Um, then you can do that to go for a more mysterious look or more. Um, formal or whatever your, your sort of corporate colors are, right? You can go that route and, and use those colors. So let's talk about a couple of other traps to avoid. Um, so if you're doing, you're trying to lay your lines out uh, and it's light paper, right? I recommend Frixion, right? Because it draws a dark blue line that you just with heat disappears. And so you don't smear anything. You don't worry about anything. Well, this isn't going to work on dark paper, right? You won't be able to see the dark blue line, so you need an alternative. Well, good luck trying to find a raceable white pencil. This <laughs> is the closest thing I have found. So it's Bowen, France. Weirdly enough, this is chalk. What? It's a mechanical chalk pencil. That's witchcraft. Right. So this will actually draw a decently, easily seeable line. Doesn't really smear that much, but it does erase very, very easily. Right. So this is the best option I've found for dark, uh, darker paper. Right. 
here's the best option I've found for light paper. This goes away with heat. This goes away with erasing, right? Bowen from France. So there's that. Another weird thing about dark paper. Um, do this took me a long time to realize and just finally accept. There are no good white inks. Full stop. They don't exist. There are painful whites and there are agonizing whites, but there are no good or decent white inks. There's a lot of good silvers, right? Unless it really, really, really matters. Use silver instead of white. The pens work better. Um, they write better lines. They um, give it I think it just it looks better all around, right? There's not really a situation where you would need it to be white instead of silver, right? I mean, maybe if it was gray paper, then you could kind of run into an issue, but if it's a light enough gray paper, you can use a dark ink, right? right? Or use a gold, right? Oh, there, there's, yeah. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of, like, gel pens. Huh? This one is the Uniball Signo, right? Okay. Heard of that um, right. Uh, if you're if you're wanting the color to show up on darker paper, and maybe you want to have like a navy blue paper, an envelope, and whatnot, that sounds pretty sexy, right? <laughs> so you can start playing with these these colors and whatnot, right? Then like it arrives blue and it has gold, right? A nice sort of marine kind yeah. of look, or you know, Cub Scouts, or any number of yeah, things. Oh, yeah. where you, you can play with uh, with the color theme very very easily. But I have tried the gel pens. I have, I think, three different dip uh, inks for okay. white. There aren't any good ones. <laughs> <laughs> they all suck. They all suck. They suck to different degrees, but they all suck. Is it because suck. of the translucency of them? Or I think, is it kind I of think, like writing with milk? And then... <sighs> well, okay. Even the ones that, that, that the professionals use, um, you spend a huge chunk of time trying to add water to it to get it the right consistency to work for a while. And then it'll start to dry out, and then you have to add, and you're always fighting it, uh, right? And these are the, I've looked and looked and looked, and these are what the professionals have found, right? Like, this is the best option. There's just that not full good time. There aren't just, good whites, It just right? doesn't exist. Uh, it just doesn't exist. Whoever figures I, that out, I'll be a millionaire. Maybe, right? Uh, my understanding, it has something to do with, like, the best... The most opaque white chemicals, right, don't dissolve well. Titanium dioxide. Like titanium it? dioxide, right, doesn't dissolve well. And, Fair enough. <laughs> and there's a limit to how finely they can Be powderize or, it, yeah. right? And so really, it's, and, and they're heavy, or they don't weigh the same as the so they as fall the fluid. out of solution or something. Right, there. so they're always falling out of solution, or they're drying out, or it. it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work, <laughs> right? And so you can chase it and fight it, or do silver, do blue, red, purple, yellow, anything else, orange. Any of the gel pens should work. I mean, you can try, and some will work better or worse to different degrees mm -hmm. on darker or colored paper. But um, yeah, don't. I'll save you that headache because I fought it enough and just surrendered and started going with silver. Um, and it looks good. It, lo it does look really good, right? And Hey, this is a really pretty set, but the... I can check my Amazon account. But yeah, these envelopes were for sale on Amazon, right? Uh, and then the paper was for sale on Amazon, but it was also available at Staples. So um, good locally. And so this one... I almost always buy everything locally if I can. If you can, right? Yeah. Right? Same kind of concept as before, right? So I wrote the dimensions in this one. And there's a reason for that, because these envelopes uh, look amazing, and they're super cheap on Amazon, right? And the problem is, there is not a sane normal size that fits inside those envelopes. So I wrote these out because I spent eh, 10, 20 minutes, maybe not that long, maybe more like 5, 10 minutes, um, with the guy at Staples in a great big stack of paper trying to cut it to the right size to where I could fold it into the cards I wanted to send. <laughs> okay. Right? It's like, I really need... I need... Right. But you say, oh, we'll just make it the same size as the envelope. Right? No. 
because then it won't actually fit inside, fit inside the, the envelope. envelope. <laughs> so that, that doesn't work. It doesn't actually work, right? Well, the, the, the UK's got this figured out with their A paper, right? Because you could just like fold it in half, it becomes yeah, a fold it in, right? Yeah, it's, it's mathematically yeah, A four, yeah. then it's A five, and A C. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. But and not, so, but not in the U.S. Because we're screwy, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, or Libya. If you, apparently, if you choose to go the with these standard with these envelopes, right? Then, and you want your paper be able to fold so you can write as such. You want it, what I have here, seven and one sixteenth by 10 and a quarter inches. And that's perfect. And that fits well. Um, I still obviously do the, the, the round corner thing, which is probably easier to see if I do it here. You can see that that corner is rounded and that mm. corner is rounded, right? I think it adds a nice touch and it makes it look not it makes it look a little more finished and nicer and whatnot. Yeah. But um, I also have another question too. Sure, sure. Um, I'll be looking at the price because you'll be shocked at all those costs. Well, that's that's what I that's what I like about this too because it's like you know what yeah that sounds it's good so but you know to get started and you gotta like spend like three hundred bucks to get started it's like oh my gosh. Um, Moon Eaters asks if I wanted to attach a different color to the inside, would that be a good idea? Attach a different color, like wax to the inside. And I may not have been here for that part, so I, I have. Oh, uh, it's been focused on this chat. Actually, if I wanted to attach a different color to the inside, I would love black on the outside and red on the inside of the envelope. That, oh, you're that would look oh hot. the envelope itself. How would you do that, though? I would look at uh, cutting and making your own envelopes. Uh, there are you can get tools to um, like make your own envelopes. Um, Okay, it's, and it's I guess I've seen that thing. done too. Right. Yeah. And a lot of actually magicians do that a lot too. <laughs> for for various for all <laughs> sorts of reasons, reasons. right? Reasons. Yeah. For um, you know, individuality. Uh it's like uh my orders. Okay, let's see. I have to say too, Justin uh is with us tonight. So welcome back, Justin. Glad to have you back, buddy. Um Justin uh had suffered a, a hand injury or a Ooh. nerve nerve injury in his arm that affected his hand. Um, and he was having a really hard time rehabilitating himself, but he's back to 100%. So, really happy to hear that. And thanks, oh, thanks yeah. for being here, Justin. Glad to see you. Don't let me go back three months. What? Yeah. It only lets him go back three months. Uh, Amazon, uh, how dare you? Didn't you know we were doing this video today? <laughs> You're not being very helpful. <laughs> It'll be one. Okay. Oh, okay. We have 50, some. Uh, yeah, 50 envelopes for 14 bucks. 50 envelopes are 14 bucks? Yeah. That's cheap. And that's what I'm saying, right? That's cheap. And they look sharp. I'll tell you. the foil and everything else, right? With, you go, with you go to a stationary, like, invitational store, it's like a dollar per envelope. Do you know, can I tell you something here? <laughs> Somebody who's sent out wedding invitations, you probably know this. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah they're, they're not cheap. No, they're not. They're not right? cheap. So don't, don't like, go that route. Like, that's the first commitment. <laughs> <laughs> right like do we love each other enough to spend as much as we're about to on wedding invitations <laughs> right <laughs> but yeah uh that's like um a lot of the time like depending on where you go because like uh, i i get i use um pay envelopes for like the mentalism mm -hmm, stuff mm -hmm. you know for billets and whatever mm -hmm. and uh that's stupid expensive mm -hmm. you can spend like 30 bucks mm -hmm. on pay envelope yeah yeah so that, that that surprises me how inexpensive that mm -hmm. is for them. For, for and those for are just 50. plain manila stupid envelopes, and they're a lot less material. Even. Right, they're less made of less paper. Right, and you can get that and with these the silver sharp, accent. Right? It's got the and silver accent for... on there. It's all pretty. It's fancy. It looks good. Mwah, it's beautiful. Large, right? It arrives. It's substantial. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. So let's talk about non-machinable because I, I kind of touched non-machinable. This is a so pain in the arse. So here's the weird thing, right? The, I could check the numbers, but I'm pretty sure the thing with two stamps arrived way sooner than the one with one. I don't think the post op, most post people working at the post office actually know about this. About what non-machinable means? Right. Hmm. And the reason I say that is because when I heard about it and I did as much research as I could, and I prepped this one, and I hand walked it up to the front best to make sure I had done everything right. Mm -hmm. Right? I handed it to the lady and I was like, so I need this to be non-machinable, right? So did I do this right? And she was like, oh, you want it to be not like you're trying to send it. And starts like writing me up for 
the like I like I hadn't paid for the postage and it wasn't already on there. Right? Okay. So and I'm like, no. Look, there's there, a stamp. There's a there's, stamp there's, on there's, there already. This right? non this is non machinable. Did, did you show that uh, you, on camera? Yeah, I showed it pretty okay. close. Okay. Okay. Um it's also larger, right? It's um, non machinable. It's non machinable. Right? Okay, this is what the postage and she was is for. Like, so you need a non machinable stamp? Well, like, and I was like, no. Like, well, there's a surcharge. And I was like, right. I know I there's it. a surcharge. So the is stamp. this <laughs> it? Like, and like, we were, I, it took a long time for, I guess, her to realize, oh, it's, that stamp is, has the surcharge. Is the surcharge. Right. Right. No, not is the surcharge, has the surcharge. Has the surcharge. Because. There's a different stamp that is just the surcharge. So you would you would attach one of these, and then just that other one for just the surcharge. The so it'd be two stamps. Why? But the other one's cheaper than two. Right? This is why... I'm the like, U.S. government, everybody! <laughs> the U.S. government! And I think... I, I suspect, because I dropped the, these off... At the same location, not in the same box, uh -huh. right? But the same location on the same day. Yeah. And this one took, this one, check it. But I remember this was the last one to arrive. Yes. And it took, I don't know, I have it in here a long time. Uh, it'd be, it should be your last, uh, no, oh, no, no, you didn't write them in afterwards. You had them already written in. Right. So, okay. I don't know, it took way longer. Right. Substantially, substantially long. Like to the point where I thought you were going to get it back. You were going to yeah. call me and tell I thought me, I was going to oh, get it back too. It. Right. But then it finally arrived. So let's probably make a move. Let's say about two, three weeks. Yeah. Right. Especially because this one had already arrived. And that's important to know because if you would need to send something in a timely manner, right. Like, you know. Or if you're doing a prediction, like you want to send somebody a Yeah. No kidding. For your show. For your show. You need to make sure it shows up. Right. And I've, I've, I've done that. I've done right. mail predictions. And so and you need to be aware of that. So if, if, it's, if it's a prediction for a show where it absolutely has to be there, right, do it certified. Right? Certified, guaranteed, or do it. Yeah. Is it going to cost a lot more? Yes. It's for the show. It's a show prop. That's it's, part of the cost of that. It's a write-off. It's a write-off, right? Check but, with your tax professional, but it's a write-off. Yeah, that's a write-off, okay? So <laughs> I don't think, especially after everything I had read saying, oh, you can't mail wax seals. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Apparently you can. You can, right? You clearly can. I didn't can. think you could. I didn't think you could either, but the more research I did, you can, right? <clears throat> I don't think they know about this. I don't think, well, clearly they know about it, but I don't think it's common knowledge inside the U.S. Postal Service about the non-machinable stuff. The, the point of contact, the ground zero point of contact. Right. May not so I think it kind of got, it kind of bounces around until, until it finds somebody who knows it and is aware of it. And it goes, oh, can yeah, okay. prove it and send it on. That's, right? So it was just a bunch of, uh, this Jerry, isn't right. what do I do with this? This isn't right, this isn't right, this isn't right. Oh, Whereas this, this one, right? Sure. Two stamps, is it more? Yes. But, these butterflies are the only non-machinable stamps. There's no other options. There's no other options. Just these butterflies. Okay. Because, I, because reasons. Because, right? There's lots of forever stamps. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so you can throw two of those on there. It'll look better. Get there faster. You'll get there faster, more reliably. Kind of cost a little bit more. Yeah, but it's not worth it. Right? Saving the 20 cents. Or whatever you find that it is, the parking lot at the post office. Right, you'll you'll stress out twenty cents worth, wondering how long or if this one's going to arrive. Right, yep. just do two forever stamps. So another weird thing in all my research that I learned about: um, <laughs> an envelope needs to be uh, standard envelope needs to be a rectangle. Needs to be a rectangle. Needs to be a rectangle. Yeah. A wide rectangle. It can't be a square. Okay. If it's a square, then it's considered non-machinable. Just, just the okay. dimensions okay. of it, right? It can't be a square. I guess they have to know how it's oriented to okay. get through the machine, that there's a height versus width, and that's part of their process, okay. right? All right. If you send a square envelope, it doesn't matter... It doesn't have to be thick with all sorts of anything else. If it's just a square, that's non-machinable. So if it's a non-standard, if it's not a rectangle. If it's not a rectangle. And it's a rectangle this way. 
it's non-machinable. So like if you put the stamp in this corner and write the address here, that's non-machinable. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> Okay. The U.S. government, ladies and gentlemen. Right. So if, if you're trying, I don't to make, know how to do. If you're trying to make a cool yeah. impression, you think, oh, I'll, I'll like orient it this way. You can do that. You can do that. But you get a page. But you better it. put two stamps on there, right? Because this is so stupid. Right. And it's like, oh, I want like, oh my god, I want my nice square sharp, sharp everything. Right. You can do it, but it's considered non-machinable. Right. <laughs> And okay. so uh, I forget, I think it has to be under, I forget the weight. Um, it, you, you can go online, look the weight. I think it's like a quarter of an inch. Once you do non-machinable, it can't be over a quarter of an inch thick. And it has to be, say, under. As long as you're there, you're fine. And almost any kitchen scale, you can check ahead of it. I think, I've, yeah, I've got one of those. I think the larger envelope with the wax seal and the letter inside was Okay. So you're not even you're not even in the ballpark. You're not even close. You're not even close. Yeah. Right? You're fine. Um, so don't worry about that. Just, uh, just trying to mail just, like a like you know gold ingot. Maybe right. maybe you don't. You're trying to mail something clever, right? Just don't. don't I want somebody. That. By the way, you if you want to mail me weird, a gold ingot, you can right? do so at PO that Box. That's one of those weirdest things that I found. Right? Like like the orientation matters. That's right? So and stupid, and right? the um, and I kept hearing the the when I found out about non-machinable, I was like, oh yes, this is it, this is how you do it. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, but if you are gonna do the wax seal, again, because it's easy to tear the paper opening, mm -hmm. use the envelope, um, don't use white ink on dark because white ink sucks, uh, use two stamps, uh, and most of all, just do write letters. Yeah. Right? Yep. Um, if, okay, so let's talk about kind of dealing with the, with the mailing issue. Mm -hmm. um, if you can, and deliver it. Right? Yeah, well then you know it, then it you absolutely know it has to be there. Right. right? You depending want it done on, right. Depending on how far away they are, right? But like I've done that for uh, job interviews. Right? Sure. Have the interview, yeah. immediately after the interview, go home, write, write it, out. it out, right? At that point, you don't have to write um, the whole address in the front, you can just write the recipient right. on the envelope and deliver that to the lady in the front, the right? Secretary up. or whoever's there, right? right? You can just do it that way. I've kind of, you know, I. Kind of, now this doesn't You're, work for everybody. You are not allowed. You are not legally allowed to put something in someone's mailbox. No. Nope. Right. No. Nope. That is breaking the law. Right. Um, but you can put like if you're trying to send it, you can just put it in your own mailbox. What about that? Right. Um, raise, the, raise the flag. Yeah. Poncho, well, also like <laughs> if you live way out in the country, mm -hmm. um, you can actually leave money. In your mailbox hmm. and write four stamps so you can buy stamps ah, from the mailman from the mailman like people who live way out in the middle of nowhere can't get to, to, a, can't post get to a post office right the, in those regions that's cool um the postman is basically a mobile post office that's excellent and so you can buy stamps from the postman who's delivering or picking up the mail that's cool and I, I learned that I was like, that's that's a really cool, simple, great solution that's, for people that are out in the middle of nowhere. So that's how you do it. Um, other have, other uh, questions, comments? Yeah, please. Uh, Moon Eater says my mom sent me a letter on December fifth or so from Mexico, mm -hmm. and it still hasn't arrived. But someone else sent me a letter the same day from Mexico too, and it arrived two weeks after. So post offices. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't. I don't know how uh, international. Post offices actually we haven't done deal that past yet. with uh, well, I'm, I'm kind of curious like how they share the the revenue because half the time it's going through one country and the other half the time it's going through the other That's and somehow they have to NAFTA trade agreements. Now well, I do NAFTA's know not around anymore. Right? I or, do know that or. the that it's like it's still surprisingly cheap. It's like a dollar fifty to mail something to another country USPS. It's if, if it's a letter or something. If it's right? a letter, yeah. right? Standard, first class. You can pay out the nose if it's something else. We, right. Well, we've done with that whenever we worked at a Magic Network with sending. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, that's parcels and whatnot, it's not letters, right? Oh, um, the so those stamps, and you do need an international stamp on it. They're they're all round, and they seem to have like a holly or flower hmm. on them, and so. Clearly, the post office is trying to use some sort of reason mm. and, and logic to the size of the stamps. So, like the non-machinable stamp are massive, right? 
are larger compared to the forever stamp. Right. And if you look at the... About 30% larger, I'd say. Right. Um, and then the international ones are larger in the round. Okay. Um, beyond that, the moving the other direction, there are actual postcard stamps. So postage on a postcard is even less. Mm -hmm. right. 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 So if you're really going to be a penny pincher, you can create your own postcard, actually. Right? It's just a size requirement. So as long as you're under the size, the you can postcard. send a postcard, right? I don't think people are as likely to keep a postcard. There is, there is right? that because, and yeah, it doesn't... And you're ruining part of the card with the addressable information on it and everything right. else. Right. Um, you don't have nearly as much space to write necessarily. Right, but if you're doing... But, yeah, but you can, you can create a postcard out of your own paper. It doesn't have to be a postcard. postcard. Right. Okay. Um, and then you just get postcard stamps, which are all goldfish. That's that's the postcard stamp. Like, oh, clownfish. I'm sorry. Clownfish. clownfish. It was like like. Oh, like that's that's the postcard stamp. Clownfish. It's clownfish. <laughs> they are a clown. Well, it's it's, it's like this one, right? It, it, all of these are butterflies, right? That's that all it is, and the other oh, one just there's no imagination. There's no in there's the no US variety. <laughs> there's no variety in the words. So they put all the variety to the forever stamps, and that's is what it is. But that's fine. Um, but yeah, uh, do write them. Uh, do send them. Sometimes it can be a little uh, strange asking someone for an address. I ran into that. Um, yeah. So it's I like, mean, can I get your address? Like, why? And so <laughs> what I found uh, one of the best ways to handle that is I'd like to send you something physical. Where should I send it? Hmm. Right. Yeah. Because then they'll decide where they want to give. They'll you. decide where they want to give. Is their office is right. their home. Is it's their office their is their home or something PLX. like that? Right. Um, so you're not asking where they live, you're not asking for their address. I mean, you're asking for an address, but not necessarily their address. Right. So that's the better way to um, that. Um, I do when, uh, something in my contract. Okay. Because I, 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 I want the address now. Like, if, I'm, if they're already entering data, right. I might as well have them write, mm -hmm. write it all in. So I, I, have their, I have name, like, like whenever they're filling out their information, mm -hmm. it's name, address, Telephone number, email. Uh -huh. So I have them put all that stuff in, uh -huh. and then to make sure that they don't put the venue address in, I make that separate. I call that venue address, uh -huh. and so it's very clear if right. where which one is which, which one is which, um, and then I just have well, it automatic. Yeah, and then also asking somebody, hey, if I were to send you something physical, right? Yeah. Then they start keeping an eye out for something. Right, they know that they're expecting. They're expecting. They don't know what it is. They don't know what it is, but they're expecting something. It's not it, less chance for it to fall through the cracks. And exactly, get lost. Uh, and so they're kind of anticipating it. The moon arrives, then they're oh, excited. Cool. All right, cool. Yeah. This is it. And on. Um, they only wrote me a nice letter. So there's that. I, I love you um, too. People, I have found so when I first started writing, I, I tried to be very sincere and authentic. And Warm awesome and genuine, person, right? right? And in a weird way, it made people uncomfortable, right? Because we so rarely get letters. So it, I got the impression that people were almost like I put some sort of moral or obligation on them because I had just done so much. Because no, I'm serious, <laughs> okay? Right? But no, I, I mean, I, I, right? I because that's how rare they are, right? right? And so since then. I have, I've tried to be sure to include a bit of levity mm. in any letter. Always a good idea. Right? Yeah. So say what you're, say that you, if it's a thank you letter, right? Well, not say what you're, don't write levity in Kindle. Unless <laughs> you know that, yeah. Thank yeah. you for your loss. That's a walk yeah, Thank you for your loss, right? <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Right. Congrats <laughs> your birthday, you know? <laughs> <laughs> It's like, that's right. Get blank and write, 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 write a message on there. Don't get all the <laughs> card stuff. Because, <laughs> like, greeting cards, well, either not greeting cards, they're actually celebration cards, right? right. You, never want, you never get a greeting card. It's like, hi. That's all I said, because it's a greeting card. Cool. Right? <laughs> Salutations. Salutations. Oh, hello. Oh, right. that, that would be a greeting card, right? But no, it is. But yeah, the greeting cards are like three bucks. Yeah, they're a lot. Right? No, that, that's, that's, that's a cheap greeting card. You know how much right. I spend on greeting cards? Like a Eleven dollars on a greeting card, and it was in a birthday card. Wow. I was like, "That's man, I'm just getting right up the 
but you yeah. know, it's like, that yeah. does not feel good. Just, just write them something, right? It'll feel more special than you're not. It's not somebody else's words either. It's not somebody else's words, right? That's what I don't like. If about you it. want to like research gift cards, right? Mm-hmm. Greeting cards, just to kind of get some ideas. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Right. You can probably go online and, and find some, right? right? Okay, they'll give you a starting point and some place to go. If you're not sure how to say what you want to say. Right. Um, so on a thank you letter, be sure to um, thank them and be specific about what you're thanking them. Um, try to reference something unique that happened between you and them. So they because, remember who you are. So they'll remember who you are. Because you don't know you you don't know when they're getting it, um, <laughs> you can it'll it'll sort of anchor it. They'll get a better reference. They'll see those things. Um, they'll associate you. If you need to like include a card, like a business card, mm-hmm. in addition to it, that's perfectly I, fine. Common, etiquette. what I do, very common. Yeah, um, but something that you remember unique about your interaction, right? So that you can. Hopefully, jog their memory, and they can associate who's, with you. Who's Alan Play? Right? Yeah. Well, because okay, if you're for a job interview, yeah. Right? Oh yeah, you don't want to stand out. They might have interviewed 15 people. Yeah. Right. Thank you for the interview. I really appreciate it. I'm really looking forward to the job. And then your name, right? Which one was this? Who's that guy? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What did you appreciate about the interview? Right. What did you appreciate about him? Right. What made your and their interaction special, right? What were you interested in, what were you excited to hear? On an interview, thank you letter, that kind of thing, right? right? Um, What's important, like, you know, if I do a networking event, I mean, mm-hmm. for me, it's it's a little bit easier, for magicians, a little bit easier because uh, we stand out like sore thumbs, right? Mm-hmm. If you're at a networking event or you, you want to stay in touch with somebody or something, mm-hmm. you're probably the only magician people. But... Uh, to show that again, there's I think there's this aloofness that I think people magician people have so about so magicians, magicians, right? right. So it's like, oh, well, it's just another audience, or oh, he wouldn't remember. So like, if you could say something specific that you remember about, about that, that person, person, it may even come off as even more special because Absolutely. you're like, you know, you're the rock star magician that it was the right. well, uh, and, you know thing of the night and or whatever. If you start like using your stationery, yeah, in your act as part of the mentalism. Then, it's, then when it arrives, it's they know hit, who it is. They it's know branding. who it is, right? It's branding. They've seen it before. It's going to stick better. Yeah. They're going to keep it more, right? So um, that's part of that consistent branding uh, of yourself professionally and whatnot, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm starting to get known in my business circles for the letters that I write. That's an awesome thing and to be known great, for. that's great. It's yeah. a great thing to be known for, right? Um, Nobody else is writing anything like that, so I don't feel too bad changing the color to black right now, just because I like that set. Um, so, but hey, make it your own, right? And it's 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 so cheap, right? If you're worried about the like, don't just go do it. Just go do it, right? You're looking at a dollar fifty total if you push it, right? It's the paper and the postage. Uh, do keep a record of who you've sent letters to, mm. right? And when you sent them. Right. Uh, that's a mistake I made early on, mm-hmm. um, especially when I was like, hey, I'm going to write a letter a week, right? So I'll write one to my sister, one to my friend here, just to start for myself to share that gratitude. Sure. That sort of thing, right? So I was like, every week I'll write a letter. And if you can't think of anyone you'd like to say thank you to, over the last week, <laughs> if, you need if, for, if you can't find any a, gratitude in a week, <laughs> that's a chance. For then you definitely need to start writing letters, just, <laughs> right? Then that's definitely something you need to do. If you're just that bad, like you need to get out more and engage with people, or online more, or something with more people, and you need to start right having that in your heart and with others. Something so, I want to bring up yes. from the last live stream too that we because uh, I. For, for those of you who remember, we were here on the last live stream when we had uh, Dr. Ben Newman, virologist. Um, there was, you know, a question early on about, you know, can you get COVID from surfaces? That was a big question, mm, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. so 
you know, there was probably, I, I imagine there's been some hesitancy about sending and receiving mail and right. that kind of stuff. Um, but according to Dr. Newman, and you can go back and watch that, that uh, mm-hmm. interview that I did with him, he, you can't get COVID from services. They have not seen, in all the known cases where anybody's contracted it, they can't prove any kind of correlation between uh, getting sick and, and, right. and from a service. So lick the envelope. You're, you're, you're cool, right? right. So, um, yeah, because that might be a concern for that, some That might be a concern people, for right? some. Um, so there's, there's that. Uh, it's not a concern. It's not an issue has been but yeah start doing it um and or who it's from it can be a little weird this is a unique situation where i was able to send you a lot Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. and we were able to start tracking it that way right it might be a little different if you're sending a thank you letter or something to a colleague kind of keep calling it calling them and calling them and calling them did you get it did you get it did you get it did you get it that's kind of loses its specialness. It, it, it's, just calling to see if you've got the letter just yet. Just see if you've got the letter. Why did you just tell me it's in the letter? Well, no, hey, I'm emailing you to ask if you got, got the letter. letter. Right. So, <laughs> Did um, you get that letter yet? And you know what? Some people will get it and not say anything. Uh-huh. And some people will get it and say something a week later. Uh-huh. And some people, people will get busy. it and immediately like, yeah. wow, I just thought that I was... Yeah. Right? And so it's good to know who you sent it to. If you don't get it back, assume it got there. Um, I don't think I've ever had a letter over enough time that didn't either. Might have been two months. There. Yeah, it might take two months to either get back or get there. But I don't think I've ever had a letter truly vanish, hmm. like not get there and not, so, so the not come back. USPS is terrible. They're terrible magician. Yeah, they can make anything vanish. They can't make it. Sure, they could. I'm sure, it'll happen eventually. But <laughs> I want um, to ask you too. Yeah. Um, is, so, the, the, your experiment so far have just been about USPS. Yes. Um, so, as far as the other ones, you don't. We don't know yet, right? As far as like UPS well, or DHL or DHL, FedEx, UPS, they don't really. Do they don't really do letters. They're they're more parcels. Uh, they're more package. They don't really do letters. So, like, like well. The cheapest. That is the question. <laughs> I don't, I don't I want think, to grab on the USPS. I don't, I don't think but... they will. No, I don't think they will. I okay, think they're, they're they are set up for the parcel service. Okay, um, and the letters are really not a part of that. Letters aren't really a part of that. Right? They're they're used to handling packages. Got that process. USPS is used to handling letters. Mm-hmm. Right, it's different format. They've got. Their size requirements, their stamping, their sorting, machine, and, their sorting uh, and all that. They've got processes. all that squared away, right? Uh-huh. And so they're, you know, rectangled, rectangled away. away, not squared away. <laughs> Horizontally rectangled away, not, not vertically. Landscape, not, not landscape, portrait. right? Yeah. Landscaped away. They've got it all landscaped away. Um, and so the machines are different. They're used to handling things of a certain size, of a certain weight, of a certain thickness, in obscene quantities. That are flexible. That are they're, they're Hogwarts machines. owls. Hogwarts owls, Just, right? All the time. They're they're trying to reach your body. Parcels <laughs> are kind of all over the place in terms of size. Right. Right. And yeah. they need to be handled differently. Right. right. And so that's no. I, I don't. I do not see um, that X U S D H. So you know, don't even ever going into the letter realm. Don't ever worry. Right. And if you're going to pay those kind of prices. Well, then send more stuff. Send more stuff. Yeah. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Um, and so that would be my recommendation on that. Yeah. Um, um, Mooneyder says yes. uh, this reminds me of the book How to Make Friends and Influence People. Mm-hmm. It says to send appreciation letters to make sure other person feels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and they really do. There it is. Uh, and it sticks with people. And it it used to be considered exceptionally rude not to send a thank you letter if you've been invited to be invited in a party right. right yeah we're not saying that thank you letter for like people come to a birthday party and for the gift or whatever. right for yeah. christmas or gifts especially with gifts yeah right but kind of even of even the... for attending an, an event that you were invited to sure right it used like you might not get invited to anything after that. After that, if you didn't send a thank you letter. Right. Right. But 
Yeah, just come to my that. house, drink all my booze, drink yeah, you know, you know my, all my stuff, and then, well, and then like, thanks, right? But then not send a letter back? No, right? That, that would be... That, that's an affront. That's an affront, yeah. right? Um, and so now if you're like the one person that does send a letter, because people that host large parties at their house, mm -hmm. a lot of people, nowadays, no, right? Don't. Nobody actually sends them a thank you letter. Right. So You sent one to, uh, to Randy. I sent one to Randy. Yeah. I've sent Jason. I've sent... Mm -hmm. um, a lot of different, there's a lot out. I forgot about Randy, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm referring to, to Randy Pitchford. He's um, the owner of, uh, I believe it's Genie Magazine uh, and uh, oh, Gearbox Gear Studios. Well, he's, Borderlands Gearbox all that recently, yeah. He's, anyway. he's a, yeah, he's a, he's a guy locally in the area, supports the magic community, and uh, went to him. Mm -hmm. So. I wrote a thank you letter. He wrote a thank you letter. It was, it was, and then the next time I went to his house, he remembered that I said, and so it, it does matter, and people do notice, and they do remember, right? And he, he hosts a lot of those. A lot, a lot of people. A lot of those. Well, did. Did. A lot of those with a lot of people. Yeah, no. Right. Um, and, but he remembered that. That's how you get invited back. <laughs> that's, how you get, that's how you get invited back. And so. Um, that's how you get to hang out at the after party. Right. That's how you get to do that kind of stuff. Right. Let people know they're appreciated. Yeah. Um, and it just takes. Like, paper and some time like really this is this in itself is a magical thing yeah right. that's that's the closest thing to real magic there is um sending that to people a little so, so, do, so it. do it right and you'll be i i swear you'll be like the only person everything more and more digitally and more and more high tech and, and more and more in the moment with uh with that but people keep them yeah. and, and then they keep sometimes they keep them with them sometimes it sits on their desk but they keep them all right we're, we're so far past the point of well it's probably appropriate to burn the letter now no nobody burns the letters anymore right because they're so rare they're so rare <laughs> right? like look at this unicorn it's got the mail. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. a black unicorn a black unicorn you got yeah. the mail right Jamie why would you do that children's laughter exactly um, uh, erupting volcano mm -hmm. that's it that's <laughs> the one's gonna get that right if you get that reference i'll give you a deck of cards so, um, but yeah, so what else we got? Uh, I guess it's also because of text messages. People just get a text and they're done. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, right. It's so noncommittal. It's, it, it's, hey, if you, if you want what everybody else, if you want the same results that everybody else is getting, do what everybody else is doing. doing. Right. Yeah. But you send a thank you letter, a physical thank you letter. And People are almost unnerved by how kind of a gesture it is these days, which is why I started including levity in every letter I send, unless it's a... It reminds me of a Benjamin that. Franklin uh, quote, though, it's like about the book, borrowing a book. If you wanted somebody to, like, you know, ingratiate yourself to somebody, like, ask them a favor. Yeah. Right? So it's kind of... It's kind of like... It's a little bit like that. They're the, they're the same kind of feeling. Right. There, right? Not that you're trying to write letters to manipulate people, necessarily, but... Right. But they they are so amazed by by what mm -hmm. you, that 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 it stands out. Mm -hmm. They give you some kind of yeah extra attention. Mm -hmm. And not bad either. And so so many options that that are actually open to you are open to you because somebody else is being kind to you, right? Yeah, like at your oh, bank, yeah. in 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 customer service and hospitality. You piss everybody who's worked a lot of these different jobs, you know you can be as helpful or be as, as helpful, helpful or as little like. helpful as, as you like, right? And so I'm always rewarding nice. yeah, always be nice and rewarding rewarding someone for being kind to you, right? They might be kind to you again. Right? You should reward the behavior you want to see more of in the world. Hmm. Um and maybe you'll get a letter back. Probably not. You probably won't get a letter back. Right, the I'm return address call. is on there, but you'll, you might get a text, you might get a phone call, you might get nothing, but not about getting something back. Right? No, it's about no, don't go with even that. even purely selfishly, it's about getting holding a spot in their mind, yeah. right, and being able to have them thinking of you. A Toma, uh, yeah, top, top of mind top awareness. awareness, Toma. So a Toa, Toa, Toma. Um, so do it. Uh, it's easy. Right? Your handwriting is atrocious. Yeah, my handwriting is atrocious, right? It's bad. 
but they still figured out how to get it there, right? <laughs> even even with my terrible handwriting, they still figure out how to get it there, right? And there's they have they have like uh, they have like tablets. Uh, yeah, they'll do like these kind of strip cuneiform things, things. barcoded on, but um, especially like in the magic community because you're doing so many mentalism things. Well, at least definitely with mentalism because you do so many billets, so and many how. papers. Yeah, you know. I have I have I have mail prediction. Right. Yeah. And so people will have already associated you with those items, right? And with those items specifically. And so do it. Um, Because the only time people come close to getting anything like that is a wedding invitation. Yeah. (laughs) Which is, what? Right. That's that's a common in society, right? Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Other questions or thoughts other well, i want to check weird, this i'm seeing sure. a couple of uh the chat things kind of smooth through here so i want to make sure New japan they still send faxes <laughs> to each other and i guess places be, yeah nothing okay. like a letter there's nothing like a letter um oh okay so let's talk about ink and paper and those kinds of things sure um there's a was it on cardstock uh if you're getting Okay, I don't want to do this. I'm into fountain pens. Yes. Okay, uh, because you can get all sorts of crazy ink and whatnot, and it's a rabbit hole. You can absolutely go down. I got into fountain pens because I learned. I originally learned calligraphy from engraving, mm-hmm. um, and a fountain pen I discovered flex, change the width, the line you were writing, which is um, pretty. But that's how I did my engraving, mm-hmm. right? So oh, with the deeper and deeper and shallower to change the thickness of the line I was engraving. Right. So that because I was engraving with a dental drill. So taking similar techniques over to a more common medium, that's why I got into fountain pen. Okay. So like this, and the differences. Well, that's not putting this. There it goes. There it goes. And the differences in the thick and thin lines, even though it's backwards because the camera set up that way. Um, that's based off of how hard I was pressing. Fountain, the fountain pen, nib. right, right, and, and a nib that's actually designed to flex because otherwise you break it. Or, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so with fountain pens, you can. There are some amazing, beautiful, bizarre inks out there, right? Where the ink will be blue, but the light will reflect off of it. So literally, depending yeah. on what angle the light is hitting, you it sent me some of that stuff, right? will change the color and how it looks. Which is magical. It looks really cool, right? And of course there's a catch. You need good paper if you're gonna do that, right? Because if if the ink just absorbs into the paper and the feathers yeah. out, then it blurs out and it's like so mush. Good, right? right? Um so there's good if you, if you want to go into fountain pens, right, then um the good papers are basically Tomo River with Tomo River is it's the best paper for fountain pens, but it's so thin that I would feel good sending anybody that because it, it feels like the tissue paper that the actual letter was wrapped in, right? But nothing, so you wouldn't you wouldn't write anything nice or important on it, right? It doesn't have that kind of nothing. I would, uh, nothing I would want to send to anyone. Okay, right? Unfortunately, and it's a shame because it's they're, good paper. They're, it's the best paper for fountain ink, fountain penning, huh. right? If they made a thicker stock. I'd send it all the time, but they don't. Nah. Good you get. Uh, Rhodia? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Rhodia. yeah. So, like... Toma River, Rhodia. Uh, there's another common one I can't think of. This is okay for fountain pen, but if you look at it kind of closely, you can see that it's bleeding. Can we... Yeah, you can look at it. Oh, um, no. Maybe we can't. No, we can't. But uh, there's some bleeding, some feathering. Um, with it. Hi. So, May I? yeah. Pull this up to the camera. And then, uh, yeah, contrast. Right. So I got to be a can't really. Uh, a, little, but, a, little, a little bit, but a yeah. little bit, right? But um, yeah, there's some bleeding, some feathering. So you got to kind of be careful and work with it. Uh, the These envelopes, the simple ones um, I got from Staples, uh, they are. Terrible paper, uh, hmm. fountain pens. Okay. Um, so well, I guess that you know probably most are not designed to accept that kind of ink anymore. Anyway, right? right? And fountain pens can be pretty wet. 
um, they, they close and whatnot. So um, you start looking at like mountain pinnings. It's, it's a whole another world and dimension color made and sheen and color. All these are different things that can go into the same. So and you can absolutely match whatever color or branding you're going for. Right? You, you just so the options are your there. Colors that you use, then nail those, right? Or your style or what. Um yeah, mine are my colors are white, black, and red. Right. And so hey but for just, both for both for the magic minute and also for Right, for your show, right? For but creepy magic. Your primary color is red. Right. right? And so you for, might for this channel. For this channel. Mm -hmm. Right. Well you also get the red jacket. Yeah, yes I do. Right. Yeah. And so you might want to go with like red envelopes. Mm -hmm. Right. And red paper. And I'd then, probably do red on the outside, black on the inside. Yeah, I was doing the two tone. Right. Yeah. And so and then you might do uh black on red is kind of hard to read. Right. And so because even your shirt there, you recognize that white on red is easier to read. That's, yeah. And so but, but but I might use silver silver right. instead or right. Yeah. Um not white ink. Uh or you could go with uh you might go with a more maroon, darker red, silver stand out more. Right. Um but Having those kinds of things, I'm a magician, like everything he did was purple. I can't remember, but like he had a purple suit and people uh, were signing things. He used a purple Sharpie. It's just like a, Paul Green does everything with green. Right. So this is and so, so I, I right. know about that one. Right. And if you're on stage and that's you and somebody gets that, they're going to know immediately who it is. Right? If you're known for a particular color. Right. Rudy then Kobe with his checker shoes. Right, his checker shoot. You, like, you know, know that's Rudy Kobe. Right, right. you know it's yeah. Rudy Kobe, right? So if I got a letter it had <laughs> it was checkered across the bottom, I would assume it was like, Rudy Kobe. Um, what was it I heard? One of the best examples on whether or not you're unique is if somebody were parodying you, would anybody be able to tell who they're parodying? Right. Right? If they can? If they can, you're unique. Then, then you're unique, right? And distinctive. If they can, and if you couldn't, then... Get there. So, yeah, like right. if, I, if, I, if I go... Uh, how, would, how would somebody parody you? And, and, I'll, and I'll give an example, because everybody will know... Well, anybody over 25 or 30 will know who I'm not. <clears throat> in a band down by the... No, no. Oh, no. Fun day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Wouldn't eh. you be mine? You gotta take the shoes and flip them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, go. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? I'm Mr. Rogers. Right? And so, you can tell right away. Right. Yeah. That's part of being the distinctiveness. Getting distinctive. It's, and it's just a small thing. Yeah. You start getting known for it. Yeah. And then do it. Please do it. The world needs more of it. And letters are one, it's one of those silly things because everyone says, oh, I love getting letters. Or wouldn't it be great if people actually wrote letters to each other? Then do it. It still exists. You can you still want, do like, the thing. Oh, I wish we lived in a world I gotta where hire a pony. Letters. I don't know where I'm gonna get this. Right. How am I gonna get this? <laughs> I wish we lived in a world where people still wrote letters. Then do it. Be the change you want to see in the world. Be the, right. Yeah. Like that's... everybody knows how to do it, but nobody actually does. I don't know why people are afraid of it. Well, because people are, it's easier to complain than it is to do something. Yeah, well, people need more gratitude. So start sending thank you letters. Yeah. Um, and so I guess that's uh, gray and red could go. Yeah, gray and red. Um, you can get into color theory about what goes well and what not. Color wheels, and, color wheels and, and, and matching it. And, um, but, you know, sufficient of contrast. Find what works for you. Also, find, decide on something you can find reliably, because that is another consideration. Penn and Teller do that with their suits. Yeah. Um, they, because they, they're, they're they're always match. Right. Right. Uh, so, and then they, like, they have to get, like, uh, Rudy Kobe's the exact same way. Like they don't make his shit anymore, right. <laughs> which is a problem. Right. So what they did start doing is they started offering uh, <coughs> to like you could do design that shoe. So he sends custom design, <laughs> right. which is a style that they used to make. Right. So that he can still get them. And he's been buying. Like I talked to him at Randy's. Yeah. And he was like, like um, I find like every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> like some stash that there is somewhere, and I will buy all of the Most shoes. Important part to ink the paper, the envelope, uh, sending it. So if, mm. you, if you're going to talk about Fair writing, enough. so if you're talking about writing on fountain pens, there's there's the trifecta, right? The pen, the ink, and the paper. 
Um, and getting the right balance between those three elements, right ink, um, a pen with, that's adjusted well with the nib and everything. So mm -hmm. fountain pens you can get as fiddly or as, or as much as you want, right? right? Um, once you're willing to kind of take that plunge and mess with the headache of filling the ink and all those different kinds of things, it's opened up to you in terms of the color and the, and the beauty yeah, and, the and, 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 and the stylistic with flex and all sorts of different things, right? But that's a rabbit hole that a lot of people don't necessarily want to go down. And, and I understandably want to add so, something yeah. here too, because um, we've had, we, a while ago, I had a sponsor a program, uh, Sherpa mm -hmm. or Paradise Pen mm -hmm. Company, and I want to make sure I, I throw some love out to him right now because he, he carries, I don't, I don't know if you've ever seen my pen. In fact, I want to get it. But um, and I'll grab it while Joe finishes that uh, thought. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, he offers in these cool pens, which you can get as magicians, you put the Sharpie inside and mm -hmm. close up. He also offers fountain pens, right? That, that will fit inside of there, mm -hmm. right? They're just like a plastic disposable one with a metal nib. They're not anything fancy. Right? Yeah, there's they're disposable not, fountain pens. But they're, they're disposable fountain pens, and they're super easy if you're just getting into right. it and want to kind of play with the fountain pen, but you don't know what you're doing. It's a really just great option. Started, yeah. Yeah, and, I'll, and let me get so it. So in terms of what do I think would be the most important, the ink, the paper, or the envelope? The paper, actually, because that's the part they're going to feel. That's the part they're going to keep. Um, if you mess up the paper, everything else kind of falls apart. Uh, so if it's just like super cheap printer paper, then and you don't get the right impression. It's not gonna get the right impression. It's not going to have that impact. Um, they're not. They're probably not gonna keep it, right? They they might pin it up on a wall, maybe, but the odds are less that they're gonna keep it. Um, so of the three, I would say the paper, ink, at a minimum needs to be it needs to be legible, right? Uh, the envelope, it's good. Uh, I consider it basically a necessity if you're going to do wax because it's too easy to tear the paper mm -hmm. um, doing the wax seal if they try to open it. So uh, if you're going to do a wax seal, absolutely an envelope. Um, but the envelope needs to look not bulk mail. Right? If that's because it's ivory, because it's black, because it's not standard white. <laughs> so I got ebony and ivory. Right. <laughs> Living perfect harmony. Um, sorry, sorry. If it's Paul McCartney, right? If it looks not like bulk mail, right? That's what you're trying to do, and that's what you're trying to avoid. Mm. So that's low hanging fruit. But yeah, I would say um, I would say the paper because that's leaves the like, biggest impression. That's the biggest impression, and that's going to determine whether or not they keep it. And that's what makes it feel substantial, right? That's yeah. that's what's going to make them want to put it on their desk. I mean, this is, I don't know um, if you can get, like, a sense, I'll pull this up to the microphone. Yeah, it's got, it's got some heft to it. Mm -hmm. Not so much that it feels, like, weird or not, like, paper, you right. know, but it's not, it's not, it doesn't feel cheap. Yeah, right? and... It's a crease. Yeah. Like I said, 65 pounds about right. Yeah. Uh, it's, much it's, harder it's, than that, it'll get weird when you fold it, or, or if you get heavy enough paper, it'll actually tear. Yeah. When you fold it. Yeah. Because it's, yep. it's like made for certificates and like nice pretty things and they just assume it's going to be rigid. Rigid and yeah. print flat. And so if you fold, some of them will, will tear and you want to have a nice sharp crease. Um, so you, so yeah, looks, less, less foam core boardy. Yeah. More, yeah. So um, that's about the right weight. Obviously the, the materials will make some difference, but that's, that's what I've found. Cool. Much less than that. Starting to feel insubstantial, much more than that. Doesn't like to fall. Sweet so spot. that's the, that's the sweet spot that I found that I like. Magicians know about sweet spots. Yeah. Okay. He's gonna show you this. I'm gonna show you this. This is the. Sh I don't think this this particular design is available anymore. But, um, but there are lots of them. Um, Paradise Pen Company, uh, Sherpa, like uh, like the Sherpa's awesome guys that help me up a mountain. You know. Up, uh, it's it's engraved on there, but it's so shiny. But anyway, these things are really cool because uh, they. It's, it's just a sharpie. sharpie. It's yeah. just a sharpie in there, right? And so you can put any color sharpie. Well, I do red because I have well reasons. Obviously, you know, there's there's reasons. But he makes uh, the Paradise Pen Company also makes um, 
disposable fountain pens, fountain pens that, fit those. that that come in a, total, a whole variety of colors and you just pop them in there and then you've got this really fancy nice fountain pen i actually went into i have a uh, uh mont blanc and it has uh like you know you need a special kind of ink refill for it and i was pulling my pens out of my pocket looking because i didn't know which one i needed and I said this on the counter in a Mont Blanc like boutique, which is not a cheap place, <laughs> right. right? And they picked this up. And they go, "Wow, what is this? Is beautiful. When did we make this?" <laughs> it's is... <laughs> like you never did. <laughs> you never did. This was like I think this is their like premium line. This is like the ultimate or something. This was like seventy dollars. Right. But if you know anything about Mont Blanc pens, you can't get into a Mont Blanc for seventy bucks. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> so, Maybe if you could, you know. When did we make that? Never. Never, you never made it. But that's the kind of impression it leaves. It's this solid mm -hmm. metal, yeah. beautiful lacquered uh, thing. And uh, so I want to make sure you guys uh, check out. They're not sponsoring this video. They're just. Uh, but they're awesome. They're. I'm a big fan of their of their products. I've had. Um, they've done giveaways on this channel before, um, about like almost two years ago now. But you guys should know about them. Paradise Pen Company or Sherpa Pens. So thank you. Actually, uh, that reminds me. I. Had planned it and I'd forgotten about it, but you saying that reminded me. Um, I'll do a giveaway. Oh, oh, oh! So see, this is why you stay for two hours, guys, because uh, you know. So you are the ones. That... This is of this set. Okay. Because right? I'm mostly moving on to this now, so I have a bunch of this left over. Oh wow! That I'm basically not going to use. Sweet. So, however you want to determine that, I will send okay. one of your listeners. Um, a set it won't be like one it'll have like you know several of these kind of oh, so it's, it's a starter set a starter set right so that they'll actually they'll actually start doing it that's awesome and so wow i'll, I'll, I'll let you determine how that's going to be done yeah but uh and i don't know how many of them i have so i'm not going to say um I'll that's get that's, this one short. <laughs> that's one short that's one shorter i'm not going to play those games right yeah uh so um, yeah, I, I forgot I wanted to do that because I'm I'm switching over. Well, thank so, you yeah. very much. Yeah, we'll do that. That's awesome. All right, because it's very awesome. to the gratitude on the. And, mm, I'm gonna write you a thank you letter. I appreciate that. You have my address. <laughs> I, well, I can't. It's, it's, I can't. I can't read it. I'm, I can't. Right. Uh, I'll send you a text. Oh, okay. Uh, no, I'll, I'll, I'll send you a letter. All right. That's great. Thank you. So I'll, I'll commit to. Uh, I'll commit to a, do, figuring out how to do that, and, and we'll yeah. figure out how to make that work, Excellent. and I'll give it to you to get to them. All right. Yeah. Um. I probably it'll probably be announced. I don't know how I'm going to do it yet, but uh, stay tuned to the Discord if you're not already there. I know it has been wonderful moderator, and thank you, Eight. You're the best. Um. He's been sharing the Discord link. You can either go look back up in the thing, or if I know it, he's going to post it before I finish the sentence. Um, but uh, yeah, you follow it there, and and then I'll uh, announce how I'm going to announce it. <laughs> how we're going to determine. How we're going to determine it. Okay. And see, there he is. See, there you are, it. I love you, man. Thank you. You're you're the best. I need to send you a thank you card. <laughs> <laughs> I have his address. Right. So, yeah. I get the feeling that that uh, whoever receives the kit is going to be one short because you're going to. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm you're going to have take a couple of letters to send and then send the whole. That's why we're not going to say how many there are. Right, right. exactly. That's what, they could get away with it that way. Yeah, if it's <laughs> not even number, then uh, just uh, off the top there, <laughs> top. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's, thank you guys so much for being thank you. Uh, here tonight. Uh, you, this is a much longer stream than I usually do, but so full of information. I want to thank Joe for coming. Thanks for having me. And. Uh, sharing all this wonderful wisdom. This is stuff, like, really, guys, this is what, what separates you from just, uh, you know, what, what anybody uh, else. David Hyra calls a, a can of soup. Yeah. Right? Don't be a can of soup. Uh, show up and uh, and, and uh, take, take uh, ass and kick names. <laughs> <laughs> I broke him. Thank you guys for being here tonight. Uh, have a wonderful one. I'll see you guys really, really soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>